Alright, what's poppin' y'all? I'm back. My bad. Had to go check on the little man. Uh, can y'all hear me? Testing one, two. Okay, we good, we good. We in there like swimwear. It's your boy N-O-R-E-K, man. First and foremost, man, salute to everybody that on their grind, doing their thing. Um, last few days been real hectic for your boy. We've been doing a lot, doing a lot. A lot of family, uh, family things and also taking care of business. So yeah, I've been kind of drained. So I haven't really sat down and did a video or reaction or uh, nothing. I, I gave y'all a little, little bit of uh, when I when I installed the two new vending machines. So you know that was a great feeling. Um, yeah, we we stepping it up. We embarking on this journey, man. And it's you know I like the way it's going. I love it. You know it's a beautiful thing. So all my entrepreneurs out there, all my uh, investors, all my People that got great ideas, man. Hey, put the pedal to the metal. Don't sleep on yourself. Bet on yourself. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, on tonight, we're going to do a quick reaction to uh, Baldassi, I think his name is. Bal Baldassi. Yeah. Uh, we're going to title this one Prison or Dead. P prison or Death. Grave or, or Penitentiary. Which, Because there's only two options when you choose to live that type of life, right? And the thing about gang culture, L.A. gang culture, is that a lot of people that decide to, to, to partake and get involved in it don't even know the history of why they want to gangbang. They just want to gangbang because it's cool, because I grew up in this area, because I seen my cousin, my uncle, my mama, my whoever did it, you know? So a lot of times it's just we become creatures of habits, and we also, people do, people be, like monkey see monkey do, <laughs> you know. Um, but yeah, a lot of this, a lot of the gang beefs and um, violence and stuff, it started from something that we don't. That a lot of people my age and younger don't know, don't even know where it stemmed from. But they get out here and push the line to the fullest, like as if they was the one that you know tried to take the jacket back in the day. Like you know, there's always a story of a different story of what really happened, but. Like I said, it's, it's, it's when it started, it's supposed to be a, a good thing, protecting the community. And, you know, it turned into to bullying and, yeah. But anyway, I'm going to let him jump into his, and we're going to do a quick reaction. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share that thing, man. Hit the bell. It's your boy, N-O-R-E-K. Blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. And tell me... Uh by your family growing up, you had mom and dad? Yeah, um, yeah, my mom and dad, um, you know, they're born here as well. Uh, I was born actually at the hospital, Centinella Hospital in the city of Inglewood. And from that hospital, I was took to a street called City uh, Converse. Uh, that's why I got this Converse All-Star tattoo, because I'm an All-Star actually from the block, you know what I mean? Um, growing up, you Prime example right there. You know, you see how he glorified the, his tattoo, Converse named after a street, you have no, you have no, no ties to that street other than the fact that you grew up on that street, you know, um, is that street making you any money, like any, any legal tender, real talk, you know, it's having that on your arm, again, we glorify these things, and then the, the youth watching it, they, they, they tend to grasp to that, and like, oh yeah, he look cool with all these tattoos on his face, but bro, that's, you a walking target. You know what I'm saying? You're a target. And I'm going to let him continue in his story, but yeah. You know, my mom was basically the main person in the home because my father, he was in prison for a long time gone. And, you know, so it was a little bit, you know, harder for me, uh, being the fact that, you know, my father was gone. I'm not going to blame that totally on, you know, him being gone, me being what I am today or everything that I live is because of that. Um, but it's definitely hard without a father figure in the home. Yeah, but big facts. That's big facts. And again, I made a video uh, a few weeks back, a couple weeks back, uh, but speaking about the importance of having a two-parent household. Now, don't get me wrong. In this case, he had his dad in his life, so to speak, even though he was in prison. But again, he's being he's being shown the wrong example of what a man is, of what you know, how you should conduct yourself or what you should engage in. But again, to each his own. I'm not knocking it because we all make mistakes, you know. But at the same time, to 
And, and, I, and I salute him for not saying, well, because my dad wasn't there, I didn't know. We all got choices. Everybody got choices. What's that in prison for? Um, he was, my dad was in prison for a bunch of robberies, you know, growing up. That's, I guess. Was, was he in a gang? Yeah, my dad was also from Florence uh, as well. Uh, my brothers, my sisters, basically, all of us except for my mom. My mom was the one that stuck to working two jobs to try to, you know, feed us and keep us, you know, in a straight line. But at the end of the day, it's like, you know, you you, you go for what you want to do. It's mm -hmm. not, you know. How far did you go to school? Um, I actually got a GED, but I did uh, get my GED through the prison system. Um, on the streets, I went to maybe like, Seventh, seventh grade, maybe eighth grade, and then it was basically I went to juvenile hall from there. Like I was a kid, gone. Like you know what I mean? I, Man, salute to soft white underbelly. Like he, I, I watched several of his videos, and the content is great content. Man, it's educational, and again, it's also entertaining in its own way, in a selfish way. But um, again, you hear what he's saying. He. Basically dropped out in seventh grade. That's that 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 story is so familiar, so familiar, so familiar. Because we get caught up in the in the in the the glamour of the street life, and we and we get distracted and we just start going downhill. And, you know, like you said, my pops was in prison for a bunch of robberies and other things, but it becomes a domino effect, right? Um, and I say that to say. Like, for instance, my uncle one time dropped me off at school. I'll give you a, give you a perfect example. And uh, I was in high school at the time. He gave me a ride to school. And he dropped me off. And instead of me going in, into the school, I, I decided to go across the street, hang out with the fellas, do what we do, blow a little bub before school, before the bell ring. Um, at this particular day, he circled back. He hit the block and came back around, see me out there doing my thing. He called me to the car. He's like, man, what you doing? So I'm just hanging out before the bell ring. He told me, he said, show me your friends and I'll show you who you are, right? That, <clears throat> that didn't resonate with me. Like I heard the words and I understood the words, but it didn't resonate with me till years later. Show me your friends and I'll show you who you are. And that's, that, that, that right there, like I said, we become a product of our environment. If I'm hanging around five millionaires, eventually I'm gonna become the six, right? If I'm hanging around five bums, eventually I'm gonna become the six. No disrespect, but real talk, man. Let me see what he got to say. I was living the street. So, so the gang stuff started for you early? Uh, 13 years old, you know, I was being intrigued by the lifestyle. And kind of intrigued by the lifestyle. Exactly what I'm saying. You know, intrigued. As a kid, yeah, we're very impressionable. We're very, we're very curious. You know, naturally, kids are just very curious. So it's easy to... Yeah, man. Kind of uh, <clears throat> amazed by it and just basically went, you know, went at it, went towards it instead of actually trying to live a different life. Like, that was what was in my in my future, I guess. You did, know? did the idea of being uh, anything else in, in life um, come into your head? Like, I, honestly, at a young age, I didn't really think about no career. I really didn't think about what I wanted in the future. Because at the, at, the, at the time, we thinking about the fun that we see, that we see going on, that we think is fun, right? And a lot of times it was fun. But again, like he said, we're not thinking about, oh, when I get older, how this is gonna, how my decisions now will affect me in my later years. You know, I, now I got all these tattoos on my face. Can't go get a job. You know, ain't nobody gonna hire me except to go, man, you, you get what I'm saying. But yeah, future. I really didn't think about my future, to be honest with you. I, it was just day for day that I was living. Um, that's that's what happened basically. I ended up, you and know, you're, you're down in Florence, which yeah, from Florencia is one of the most notorious gangs. Yeah, that's where that's where I'm from. You know, um, basically, like I said, at a young age, that's that's what caught my attention, and that's what I ended up, you know, becoming a part of. How and it didn't take long for you to go to prison. Um, no, I mean, it's, it took as long as me to turn the legal age to go, you know what I mean? Like, I, at the end of the day, like, I started going to juvenile halls real young at the age of 13, 14. And speaking of that, right, again, like, I can give you examples after examples, because, bro, I've, I've walked that path, 
And that's why I can, I'm speaking from a place of experience, not a place of judgment, right? <clears throat> so we got in the hood big homies, or we used to have big homies, right? People that you look up to, older, older guys, whatever the case may be. And a lot of times these guys stare you wrong, you know, unconsciously and sometimes purposely. But this one particular incident I'm going to tell you about, big homie, so-called big homie told me, Oh man, everything you going, you know, don't worry about going to juvie, don't worry about woo woo, because that when you turn 18, that fall off your record. That's a lie. That shit follows you for the rest of your life. For the rest of your life, it follows you. <clears throat> you know, might have somebody come tell you, oh, give you, a, give you a pistol, tell you to go put in some work. Like, you, you 12, 13 years old, again, you impressionable. You, somebody giving you a loaded gun. Now you feel like you Superman. Like you can go do whatever, you know what I'm saying? And again, that's that's the trap. If, if they not, they not, he not teaching me, telling me, okay, man, let me show you how to get this money. Let me show you how to open up a business. Let me show you how to save your money. None of that. He telling me, he trying to tell me to go shoot some shit up. You feel me? And hey, <laughs> hey, that's that's how it be in the hood though. Going in and out, you know, my first time going, I actually... So juvenile hall sounds nice, but it's actually just jail for kids, right? Right, that's a jail for kids. You know, once I seen that it wasn't actually as bad as the way people make it seem, you know, like growing up, they're like, oh, this and this and this happens, which it probably does to certain individuals that allow that to happen. Uh, myself, you know, I went in with somebody else as well with me, and we kind of like, you know, he, he put me up on game on our way to juvenile hall. Hey, you know what? This is what you gotta do. Don't be scared. You know, just do your thing. And I did. And I kinda, like I said, I, I learned that it wasn't as bad as the way people explained it. If you don't allow that to take place. You is know? jail and, and later in life prison kinda like a rite of passage for you guys? Uh, what do you mean? Is it, is it just like a badge of honor? Um, I mean, at the end of the day, it's like, you know, everybody, like growing up, in this lifestyle myself, I don't want to speak for everybody, but myself, I kind of looked up to like, I wanted to go just to... Exactly, and that, and that seemed to be the norm. That seems to be the norm with young, impressionable kids. Like, I can remember back when I was in junior high school, and me and, me and, a, couple of the partners, me and a couple of my partners at the time was actually having conversations talking about who gonna go to jail first. Like, it is a badge of honor in our community, which is not a good thing. It's not a good thing by far, because we're not. But the thing is, like I said, if there's no examples, and there's plenty of examples around, like, for instance, the teachers, the coaches, so on and so forth, even some of our family members that were doing the right thing, but because nobody just, nobody took the time to grab us, they just let us grow. Like, wild, like wild, you know what I'm saying? Wild roses or something. Just, just sprout. Do your thing. Learn by learn by your mistakes type of type of mentality versus grabbing you because sometimes you can talk to somebody and you can tell somebody everything that's good for them but sometimes you gotta grab a person and take them and show them and you know what I'm saying give them real life examples that way they don't have to that way that way at least they'll think twice about okay well if I do this this might happen. That might, you know what I mean? But well, a lot of times, like I said, we don't have that. We don't, you know, everybody's living their own lives. Everybody on the hustle. Everybody trying to get that money. Like, so they just forget about the youth. And not in, not in the sense of just like totally disregard you, but what, what we doing on a day-to-day -day basis, it's like, it, it becomes the norm. You know what I mean? Which is not okay. The experience you know, what everybody else says. You That's know, they say, you know, you get home, you get a lot of love, you get a lot of respect, you get, you know, it's just, it's something that I kind of like spoke into existence or just actually just walked into it. Spoke into existence, bro, like I just said. You know what I mean? There's been time where we, where we were sitting there joking, laughing about, oh, who gonna go to, who we think gonna go to jail first, who, who we, like, you know, dumb shit. Now that I think back, I'm like, like bro, what the fuck was y'all niggas what was y'all talking about? Like, what was, but you, 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 the tongue is very, very powerful. So you speak certain things on your life and you speak it into existence, like you just said. You know what I mean? So, but yeah, man, y'all go check out the full interview. 
you know what I mean? I'm going to let a little bit more play. But if you haven't checked it out, you see the title and see where you can go find it. Soft White Underbelly. Salute to that. Salute to that uh, platform. But yeah, man. Walk into it being part of, you know, my lifestyle. Who were your role models as a kid? My dad. My dad was my role. His dad. Dad in the penitentiary for a robbery and amongst other things, clearly. But who's your role model? My dad. And there's nothing wrong with that. But Pops ain't doing the right thing. So what you think gonna happen to, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's generational curses. Role model. But he was, he was in prison. Yeah, he was in prison, but he was still my role model. You know, my dad, uh, you know, as far as I can remember, my dad would send letters. Uh, but my dad would encourage me to stay away from life, to stay away from the gangs and, you know, don't get myself caught up and for me to listen to my mom. Like, he didn't sit there and try to make me be part of the gang or join the, the that lifestyle. But at the end of the day, it's like you can't tell somebody to do something when you did it yourself or you're in that position. Like, so I can remember my dad sending drawings home from prison, sending us cups, you know, with artwork. And even that, like you just said, Pop sent it home uh, little memorabilia from prison. As a kid, man, I can remember it so vividly. That those are so impressionable to the fact of where you wanna you wanna do that. You wanna like it's crazy, bro. It's crazy. But listen, man, to all the youths out there, all the all the youngsters that's gonna watch this video, man, don't fall for the okie doke. Don't fall for the banana and the tailpipe. Cause it's a setup. It's just two ways out of it. Prison or the graveyard. Prison or the graveyard. Those are your only two options. If you if you really live in that life, if you really want to jump out there and live that life, that's, those are your two options out. Some people are okay with that. On the Cubs, Tupperware, like, and all that, you know, was, was fascinating to me. All that was really, like, intriguing. So I, I, you know, and I didn't even have to go look for it. Like, it just basically came to me. What was your, what was your first gang activity as a, as a young kid? What did you get into? Um, so, like, at the beginning, you know, me growing up, 13 years old, I ended up getting caught for three stolen vehicles and one day. <laughs> it's funny because, you know, um, I got caught, basically. Yeah, one day. I got caught with three G-rides in one day. But, yeah, man, like I said, y'all go check out the video on y'all own. Um, this is only like six minutes into it. I ain't gonna play the whole video. Fair use only. We're just doing a quick reaction on it. But this is to show this is more educational than anything, right? This is this is a teaching moment that to show the youngsters and even some of the fellas that's still out there in their late twenties, early thirties, forties, fifties, whatever you you know what I'm saying, that's that's that thinking that that there's no way out. There is a way out, bro. You know what I mean? And I say grave the graveyard or the penitentiary because those are the two most common options to get out. However, if you, if you, if you wise up and you change your life, nine times out of 10, man, the hood respects that when, when, you, when you grow. If I'm, you know, when I was 15, 13 doing kid shit, that was expected of me, you know what I'm saying? So like I said, our big homies or whoever telling me, man, yeah, when you, don't worry about it, when you go to juvie, if you go to juvie 10 times, when you turn 18, it falls off your record. Man, that's a lie. That's a lie. That's a lie. Don't fall for it. You did? Shim, do whatever you gotta do, but we don't wanna see him out here again. Uh, my mom took me home and, you know, at the end, it was nighttime. You know, somebody called me up. Hey, bro, like, you know, can you go with me to go pick up my aunt? Ooh, and this and that. I'm like, yeah, I got you, whatever. So I jump in the car with him thinking everything's cool, and there'll be another stolen car, and I end up going to jail. This time, the cops pull up. Mom gets there. They told her, look, just go home. He's going to jail. So this time, I ended up going to juvenile hall. I didn't stay there that long, but it was my entrance to seeing what the juvenile system was like. Mm -hmm. How much time have you spent in um, That time, or just like... Oh, just know, in, in your whole you know, life? I've, I've pretty much been incarcerated more than half of my life. So I've just been in and out, doing the halls, camps, every, every, everything. I just touched basically a lot of different places. What's more treacherous for you, uh, the streets or, or prison? Um, I think like the streets 
and, and prison are basically the same, except for the streets, you have more space. You know, the um, prison system, it's a lot more closed. So it's like, you, you can't get around the way you get around out here on the streets. You know what I mean? It's just a different, it's a different atmosphere. And that's real talk. That's real talk. Like, if you're a real one from your section, from your hood, from whatever, you going to, going to prison ain't going to change how you, how you operate, how you move. You did now. It's gonna change as far as your freedom because now you on the you on the uh, magnifying glass. Like you know, everything you do, you're being told when you can use the shower, when you can use the phone, when you can go and wreck uh, to to the yard to work out, when you when you gotta eat chow. You know what I mean? Like that's why they call it three hots in a cot because you get three meals and you get a bed to sleep on, and they making bread off of you while you in there. Best believe it. The prison system is 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 one of the Bro, we all know what it is, but to you youngsters out there, man, don't fall for the okie doke, man. Stay the course. If you're a football player, basketball player, soccer player, tennis player, lacrosse player, you play an instrument, man, master your craft. If you just, uh, if you just great academically, if you can draw, whatever it is, stay the course. Trust the process. Don't try to be grown before your time. You know what I mean? Like I said, this brother right now, I don't know how old he is, but his path is already. It is it's, there's no turning back for him. So with all that on his face and on everything else, like he he gotta continue to push that line, or because even if he decide, you know what, I don't want to gang bang no more, which he probably don't gang bang, but he's still a gang member, right? Again, unless he owns his own business of some sort, ain't nobody finna go hire this man look walking in there looking like that. Let's just keep it real, <laughs> real talk, true story. But yeah, man, it's your boy N O R E K. Just wanted to drop a little something on y'all. And uh, yeah, don't forget to like, subscribe, share that thing. And we're going to tap in another time. Blah, blah, blah.